So we had the problem that we're not updating the state, that the UI isn't updated, that we're not seeing the age change here. Time to tackle this and time to learn what React's state actually is. We had props before and props is one of the important data constructs, so to say, you got in React.js. State is the other one. Props is what you pass into a component from outside of it. State kind of is what happens inside of the component, if you want to put it like that. But basically state is something which is not getting, getting changed from outside, but instead, which is triggered from inside the component. Yes, you can create chains where you pass an event to a parent component and then change the state in the parent component. But in the end, state means the state of this component changed, do something. State is something which can be changed by the component itself. The props can only change from outside. So what is this state thing? Well, let's change our code here a bit and not create our own property in this class here, but instead let's use this.state. This state is a property provided by the React component like this.props, by the way, which sets our state. And here I'll assign a JavaScript object where I then say h equals props.h. And now here's an important thing. You shouldn't assign props to your state except for the case where this is just the initial value. And that is the case here. But to make this clear, you might call this initial h. So here, change this to initial h2. That's just a naming thing. And it's just a thing I do here to keep the good practice of making sure that I don't violate this rule of not setting props to state. So of course, also change it here in the prop types then. So with that, I have my h field in this state property object. And when I increase my age, what I will actually do is I will call a function react gives me or the react component from which I extend gives me set state. Now that's an extremely important method because this method allows me to change my state. And whenever I call this method, react.js will trigger a re-rendering of the UI or at least it will have a look if it needs to re-render. And I will come back to this re-rendering process soon. So here, this set state takes a JavaScript object where I then set whatever I wanna change. And that's important. I only specify the changes here. So here in the constructor, I set up my state uh, object and I could also have, let's say, a status, which is zero. And then here in set state, I only change the age. Status will not be deleted. It's just that only age gets updated. So then I set this state dot age plus three. So X is the old age. This state rule still refers to the unchanged state, X is age, and increase it by three. And this will be my new age. Again, status here will stay untouched. That will trigger a UI update. And now here in my code, in my render function, I will output this dot state dot age, referring to the age stored in the state. And to prove that the status doesn't changed, I will output that too. So this dot status dot, uh, this dot state dot status like that. With that, if I save this, go back to the application, we see status is zero, age is 27. If I click on make me older, boom, it increases. And now we see it change in our application. Well, it took us quite some videos to make something change in our components, but I think it's key to understand how React JS components work by building it up like that. Now we're able to change this because now we're able to change the state of our component. We're not just getting data from outside of it or by setting it in the render function initially, but we're changing it 
at runtime. And that is what state does for us. State is the key trigger for us to update our UI. And of course with state, you can then also update all kinds of things in your UI. And I'll expand on this idea or we'll get deeper into React.js in the next videos.